chapter 6, verse 4, 5. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. We had two powerful midweek services. James uh, Barnes did a tremendous job teaching on Tuesday night. Amen. And then on Wednesday night in New Caney, Bethany Lam uh, Lambert did a great job. Amen. So I appreciate those that stepped up and, and, and taught us. Amen. About things. But I mentioned something that took place as I, I listened to both of these uh, speakers. And that was learning how to speak from the overflow. Everybody here has an overflow. Uh, David even made the statement that his cup overflowed. Speaking of his life overflowed. And I believe we all should have a life that overflows. And people catch that overflow. And they gather around that overflow. And it blesses them. That's a, that's a blessing when the overflow, whatever's inside. But you have to partake. You have to be able to enjoy the Word of God in, the, in the prayer and fellowship. I'm overflowing this morning because of what happened yesterday. You know, when I'm around 150 men, there was relationship connections. Many of you, Donald, you remember back in the day, I had a purple Dodge Charger. Remember that? And I connected with a man that had a purple Barracuda, and he came to our church. And then later, I did his funeral, and his ashes are in the back of a car, a, a 71 Challenger I now have. Well, there were guys at, that, uh, at the meet yesterday that go to our church. I didn't even know this been going six months, who worked with the guy who owns my old charger. So now there's a connection. I call it the providence of God. Amen. So who knows, I'll either get it back or I could get this guy back into our church. So these are those, those connections. You never know how they're going to work out. Are you comfortable? Luke chapter 6, 45. What's, Pastor, what's in your overflow right now? It's the way I talk. It's what's inside of me that flows out. As you know, my wife's been uh, uh, fighting cancer. We decided we're going to keep fighting this thing, and she's got good news. It's either scar tissue right now or so small you can barely detect it. So we give God praise for that. We'll, we'll keep checking on that as we move through. Amen. We can give God praise for that. But I'm careful what I say to her and how I talk to her because I, uh, and I, I do that with other people. I don't want no negativity in their life. Amen. I want them to stay positive and stay on the upside and realize what God can do. Amen. Uh, miracles come in cans, not cannots. Amen. That's why I, I believe in, uh, well, I'll leave it right there. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. The way one uses their tongue is a dead giveaway of their identity. The root problem is not in the mouth, but it's in the heart. I actually saw a, a comic picture. Oh, I don't know if I should say this because it's kind of political. But it was, a, it was a, no, don't do it, Jerry. See, that's the joy of being able to think of something and not saying it. Somebody told me the other day, if I think it, I'm going to say it. And I actually said to him, then you're stupid. Amen. You have the ability to think of something and not say it. Luke 6, 45, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow, everybody say overflow. Overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. And again, Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Amen. And I believe it's the will of God for all of us to get into a place in life where our cup is overflowing. You know, again, I'll just tell you, when my grandson called me, immediately when I saw that it was him, my cup was overflowing. Amen. I just feel that way about having, I got two grandkids. I, I have a, a, a granddaughter named Cassie who nicknamed Richard Witchard. And every time I look at him, all I can think about is Witchard. Amen. So I, that nickname kind of sticks. So, Father, I thank for the Word of God. I thank for the overflow. You gave us the ability as vessels vessels that could have honor in them and be stored up good things in us. And Lord, and out of that, it will overflow onto other people. I ask you, Lord God, to fill every vessel here, amen, and to overflow us. And these earthen vessels that are full of the glory, Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be, sit be seated. You know, like a bucket draws water from a well. Uh, we, had a, we had a well when we were coming up. We, as a matter of fact, we had several wells. 
Kenny, we had one well, my dad dug. We had some that we, we, we bore, you know, and got a primer. You had to go out and primer the pump, amen, to get the well to, to kick on at times. It would go off, and you'd run out of water. And, but the first well we had, we drew water out. My dad uh, dug it. It had rocks on the side. You could walk down it. I know I, I've, I've told this story before, but I just think it's funny. One day a chicken flew over it while they were drawing water and went inside the well. When you get a chicken in your well, well, you're gonna have you got to do something. And my dad would go down inside the well, and he started drawing out feathers. Drew the chicken out, started drawing out feathers, and something happened on the top. There was a little bit of miscommunication between him and my mama, and he mom dropped the bucket, and it hit him on top of the head. And I could I don't know if you've ever heard cursing come from a well. But it reverberates as it comes up through there. You know that there's somebody upset down there. Amen. When my dad came out, he had blood coming down the side of his face and chicken feathers in the bucket. And it was, uh, you had to draw the feathers and blood out until you put Clorox in it until you could drink it again. That's just a story. But I'm telling you, out of the overflow. Hallelujah. James 3, 2 says, we all stumble. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man. If you can watch the way you talk, you become perfect. The Bible lays it out. Able to keep his whole body in check. So this right here can keep your whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships for an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Whew. When your tongue goes wild, hell did that. Amen. You're fellowshipping on the wrong side. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, creatures, all of the sea are tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. Hey, bro, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So the Scripture says, pick one. Pick one how you're going to talk. See, the verse 3 and 4 talk about the tongue has the power to direct, like a bit in a horse's mouth. I've cowboyed a little bit in my life, and I can tell you, without a bit in that horse's mouth, you ain't going to get that horse to do what you want it to do. Amen. And the right bit for the right horse. You've got to find. I find that some people need a, 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 a Rutledge Roper. That's a bit, Mitch, with a whole lot of bite in it. Amen. Some folk just need a little bit. But some folk need something that's going to my out a horse. That, that bit, literally, that Rutledge Roper, when you pull it on, it cramped that tongue down. It hold that tongue down. And I thought to myself, Lord, you could do that for some humans, amen. Get them a rope or they'll push it down. That tongue has the ability to direct, amen. It should be given direction. Uh, verses 5 and 7 talk about tongue has the power to destroy, like a fire. A tongue out of control can destroy a marriage, a ministry, children, reputation. It's full of deadly poison. And the tongue has the power to delight, like a fountain and a fig tree, encouragement admonition. This is what I've been practicing. Oh, sometimes it's hard to do, but to admonish people, to encourage people, instead of putting them down. I wonder how James would feel, the man that wrote this book, if he knew how much we've conquered in 2022. We put men on the moon. We've been camping in outer space for months. We got some type of uh, ATV running around on Mars right now. Hey, hallelujah. We've sent men in, uh, to the bottom of the sea. We bounce our words off of satellites around the world, and yet we still haven't conquered the tongue. At this point, it would be a great place for you to bite your tongue. Just kind of feel that what it would feel like. Mm -hmm. I've often called this tongue a little red rebel. It's just rebellious, isn't it, Charlie? 
Oh, Jesus. Amen. So I'm talking out of the overflow this morning. The tongue can be your worst enemy. It can be your best friend. Your words, your dreams, your thoughts have power to create conditions in your life. What we speak about we bring about. I mentioned that midweek. What you speak about, you bring about. So I have to be careful what I talk about because whatever I talk about, I'm going to bring about. Psalm 39 1 says, I said, I will watch my ways, keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. Now, when I read that, it hit me. I, I have Richard here with me. Richard and I have been close friends for many, many years, as you know. There are things I can say around him that I wouldn't say around the wicked. You follow me? There are things I'll say around friends, people I love, but around the wicked, I, I watch myself just a little bit because I don't want to fall into that, into that place at the, in their life. So the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. It's the heart. Uh, you, you set a guard, Psalm 141.3. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. People often talk about a little angel on one on a shoulder and a little devil on the other shoulder. You need to get that angel to move over to your, to your nose. Amen, to clamp your mouth shut when you shouldn't say things. Because the issue is the x-ray with its peeping eye has saved us much human misery. It can show us, the x-ray can show us the human heart, but not the soul of the spirit. It can show us the throat, but not the voice. It can show us the brain, but not the mind. Medical science can transplant a failing heart, kidney, liver, give you a brand new lung, but there is one member that never gets tired or wears out. The more it is used, the sharper it gets. Ever heard of a tongue transplant? I haven't. Amen. I mean, that tongue, I've never heard somebody say, Pastor, I'm going in for a tongue. I, I'll be honest with you. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just get it transplanted to make it work right? But if we make that tongue work right, you've got to make the heart work right. Because the issue's in the heart. It's not in the mouth. Amen. Again, I tell you, your tongue's a dipstick to your heart. You pull somebody's tongue out, you know what's in their heart. I hear you talk. I know what's going on inside of here. There is such thing as an artificial joint, but I've never seen or heard of an artificial tongue. If we used our arms and legs as much as we use this little member, we'd look like the Incredible Hulk. Amen. Because that thing, that muscle right there seems to never wear out. So ways of tongue of the wise can bring benefit to others, wise counsel and sound advice. One of my joys yesterday was being around men of wise counsel. I walked around, I talked with them, I listened to them. Amen. It was a wonderful thing to get, just get advice from other pastors and other men that were there, some of the elderly men. Proverbs 15, 7 says, the lips of the wise, they spread knowledge. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without consultation, plans are frustrated. But with many counselors, they succeed. One of the things that I've prayed for is that our nation and the world would start having good counselors among its leaders. Amen. If the White House had better counselors, if, if Russia, Ukraine, Northern Africa, uh, Iran, if they had better counselors, somebody that could counsel people, amen, to help them understand. Because we all have, whenever I buy a vehicle, the first thing I normally do is I go buy blind spot mirrors. And I put on them. Amen. It's a gift that I give that keeps on giving. Because if I don't do that, I'll end up paying for a vehicle where somebody going to mess up, hit somebody. Amen. So it's real cheap. Three bucks saves you 3000 Okay? Listen to your pastor. Blind spot, very important. Have people in your life that see blind spots. When, I, when I'm around the guys, they see things that I don't see. Amen. So when we were doing things yesterday, they were getting things taken care of. I didn't see it. They saw it. Reproof, rebuke, spiritual exhortation. These are the hard ones, but they're necessary. Proverbs 15, 31, he who listens to a life-given rebuke will be at home among the wise. He who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever needs correction gains understanding. How rare yet how essential reproof is. It makes us a better person, and all of us have needed it. Reproof from a friend. Somebody you care about that tells you something, gives you a, hey, you got, you know, it's your health, it's your spirituality, it's your mentality, somebody that can talk to you and help you out. And by the way, Proverbs 27, 6 says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. The one who does the rebuking, if somebody, you know what I mean by rebuke, when somebody gets on to you about something, never allow somebody that don't like you get on to you. You hear me? Well, if you're going to rebuke somebody, you better love that person you're rebuking. It, that's the whole issue here. And don't do it in public. Don't do it in public. 
Watch what you say. Yesterday I pulled up. Frank Clark showed up. You know, he lives in Centerville. Frank the Tank, I call him. Well, they were parked in a place where I didn't want people parked, and I just got there, and I had Richard with me. I rolled the window down. I said, Frank, you can't park there. Well, I ain't seen Frank in six months. And as I'm driving away, God kind of spanks me and said, what did you just do? I said, well, I told him he couldn't park there. How did you say it? Oh, I wasn't very nice. I met, I met, later on, I got with Frank, and I said, Frank, I want to apologize. Amen. Matter of fact, I want to apologize in front of all these guys here. I, I want to tell you something. First thing I should have said was, good morning, Frank. It's good to see you. You can't park there. Right? Amen. It's how you say it. And what you say, it's very important. So a reproof should be important for you to know. Don't do that in front of a whole lot of people. Amen. The Bible even says never uh, rebuke an elder in front of folk. Take them aside. Talk to them. Amen. Reproof. And, but know that you've got to love them. You're not doing it to try to gain anything other than to keep them going on with God. Third, amen, words of encouragement. A man finds joy in giving an apt reply. And how good is a timely word. They're teachable moments. Those moments that timing is important, you, you got to watch for it. But when, I, when the timing is right, learn how to encourage one another. Amen. I went by and tasted several chilies that normally I would never touch in my life. Uh, again, I don't think chicken belongs in chili. But, they, but I saw some there, and I tried some. It was good. And I gave an encouraging word to those that cooked it. Amen. But you got to learn, when we're shooting skeet, archery, whatever, learn how to encourage. Amen. Not always. Even when I missed 0 for 6, there were people clapping. And I'll never forget who they were. <laughs> those teachable moments. Proverbs 15, 30 says, A cheerful look brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. Your bones need to be healthy. You need good news. Therefore, I'm very careful when I'm around people who are struggling. Amen. With their health, I want to give them some good news. I want to tell them, you can make this. You can overcome this. You don't have to always be down. I believe that in my heart. Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Again, words, 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 what we say. Amen. Out of the overflow that I'm learning to say the right thing, to speak the right thing to people. When you do that, you pull, hey, Grandpa, I saw your son Jesse over in uh, New Caney Wednesday night. I said, you tell Papa I'm missing him. Amen. And he said, well, that's good. He said, he's doing fine. I said, I just want him to know that I know that I'm missing him. And that's important. People want to know you matter. Can I get an amen? Amen. And they need to hear you say that. Encouragement is sincere expressions of gratitude given honestly to another individual. I'll say it again. Sincere expressions of gratitude, appreciation given honestly to another individual. Your tongue can be such a damaging sword. You know, I've been in the church world since I was uh, um, uh, almost 19 years old. And I want to tell you, I'm 61 now. And I've seen tongues tear churches apart. I've seen tongues destroy businesses and marriages. I've seen tongues that were uncontrolled go around and hurt people. And now the sad thing is we can print our tongue on social media and flash it out there. And the problem is very simple. You can't get it back. Psalm 64, 3, they sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their words like deadly arrows. I pity the person that does that, that sharpens their tongue and aims it. And they, what are they doing? They're trying to hurt you. They're trying to find those soft spots in you when they speak to you. They know better than do that. Amen. Be careful when you do that. The tongue is the only instrument that gets sharper with use. It's the only, every other instrument you use it gets dull. But your tongue, the more you use it, the sharper it gets. Watch out for it. The tongue has bruised, wounded, and killed more people than all the swords in history. Proverbs, there's a lot of wise sayings. You cannot call an arrow or the water under a bridge, nor the spoken word. You can't get it back. Once you spoke the word, you can't. That's why I'm saying you think it before you say it. Think twice before you speak once. Don't tell me you can't do it. Keep your tongue in prison. Your body will go free. Hallelujah. A long tongue, a long tongue shortens friendships. Hey, can I tell you a secret? No. I have people, oh, y'all just went real blurry. I've had people tell me, Pastor, can I share something with you? 
and I know this person. So I'll say, no, because I gossip. Don't tell me. I'll use it in a sermon. <laughs> Be very careful what you say around the preacher. Even my kids, bless their heart, they're they so tired of hearing about themselves. Now it's my grandkids. Listen to this little poem. Angry words are quickly spoken. Bitter thoughts are rashly stirred. Fondest links of life are broken by a single angry word. It's amazing when you got angry, you got upset, and you let something slide. And you say, Pastor, now, you, you talk a lot about I do because it's out of my overflow. My overflow tells me we have to be careful with our tongues. We got to be careful. Go back to that slide. There's some folk taking pictures of that. There you go. Even I want to make sure they get that. You got to be careful with an angry word. Amen. Because once that word goes forth, mm, I think it's one of the greatest tests uh, of a human being is how you deal with your tongue when you're angry. Amen. When you're upset. And again, you can be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Watch yourself during that time. Be responsible for what you say. Matthew 12, 36. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Beware of your words. Amen. Careful with them. I know some of you have a re you feel like repenting right now. Amen. Proverbs 6, verse 2 says, If you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. This same thing Jesus taught us. And if you've trespassed or if you've got an issue with trespass, go to that person, plead your case, talk to them. Amen. Try to work your way out of it. Uh, the showcase of the heart, and I'm going to start closing with this. Our words reflect what's in our heart. You know, whatever a person loves, they're going to talk about. Why did I just talk about Colton? Because I love that boy. He cracks me up. He thinks one day he's going to run the camp. He can't even drive. But he's learning to drive at the camp. And I don't know what his future holds. I really don't. But I want him to have hope that he has a future. Amen. So it's important. And, and so I have such a love for that. Look, and there you, many of you in here have taken him when him and Cass are here. And you love them. They, they don't get church till they get to be with me in the summer. So when they're here and I watch you love my grandkids, I'm a blessed man. Amen. And I pray you feel the same way about your kids around other people. Amen. That you're blessed because they care for them. The, the, the heart, the scripture says, create in me. David said, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. See, if I got a clean heart, I'm going to talk right. One of the first indications that I knew that God had touched me and the words were born again is that my language cleaned up. Now, I don't mean that I ain't said something since or thought something since, but my language cleaned up. Amen. I learned my language from the man that was in the well. Isn't that where we learn our language from? Those we hang out with? Amen. And of course, now my dad's in heaven. You know that. I led him to Jesus. But there's nothing that gives us way as much as our speech. Whether we have victory or defeat. Amen. How we talk to one another. It'll come out one way or another. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. This is why there's negotiations going on right now. This, this conflict and war between Russia and Ukraine. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. If they can get this thing together, they can stop this. Amen. The problem is this insidious word called pride. When pride gets involved, and then all bets are off. But death and life are in the power of your tongue. Learn how to speak right. It doesn't mean to have to be an extremist. Amen. I've never denied that I have muscular dystrophy. I've never denied that my wife has cancer. I've never denied. My son had Perthes when he was a little boy. Marie, remember this? My son Josiah, he's 29 years old now. But when he was six, seven, eight years old, about eight years old, he lost his hip. He lost his hip socket. It's called Perthes disease. I know your son had it. And it, was, it was on braces. Amen. So we had to decide because Josiah was so active, we couldn't for the life of us, we feel like it'd be punishing him to brace him or operate on him. So we started laying hands on his hip, and we started praying over him. And we started saying to the mountain, move. Because the Scripture said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move. And I'd stand in the pulpit, 
And I'd say to the mountain, move, move. And I watched the boy that could play football and soccer and run around all over the place and climb trees. Now he's not even hardly able to move because his socket's gone. And we'd pray over it, say to the mountain, move. And I'd plead with God and I'd pray over that little boy. Amen. And the next thing we went back to the doctor and had an x-ray. And that hip socket that was gone had been replaced miraculously. And he walks without a hip today. <laughs> say to the mountain, move. My 32-year-old daughter, Mandy, slipped from her mother's arms, getting out of a swimming pool, over the back of her head, amen, fell on her head on concrete. It cracked her skull from the front to the back. I was called as a young evangelist to run to the hospital in Lafayette, Louisiana. Say to the mountain, move. I put my hand on that cradle on her little body. Her head's bigger now than her body. The doctor said, if her brain hadn't, a, if her skull hadn't a cracked as her brain swelled, you may have lost her. It's not a bad thing. Have the x-ray of the, of the cracked skull. Say to the mountain, move. Learn to speak right. Of course, you know my daughter. She's a canine sergeant now. She's, she's healed. She's got to work with her tongue just a little bit. I've got to preach this message to her just a little bit. Amen. Help her out just a little. Hallelujah. But the bottom line is I've seen God move through my lips as I've said to the mountain, move. And the same God does it for me, does it for you. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. God, teach us to hold our tongues. Let our words be seasoned with grace. Let our tongues never be a sword. Let our speech always be edifying, uplifting, and that which gives you glory. Lord, let your transforming grace come over us. Remove lying tongues, God, around us. God, help us to discern truth and lies. God, I thank you for all the good things that come from you. Now, I speak to this house, and I say repentance is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It gets you back right with God. It puts you back in the highest place with God. And if you say, Pastor, I need to repent for the way I've used my tongue lately, slip your hand up right now. Don't you be shamed. Amen. I think as a lot of us in the, oh, yeah, it's most of this building. Now pray this with me. Lord Jesus, help me put a muzzle on my tongue. Help me to speak words of life and encouragement. We can do this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. Yes, yes, yes. Man, when we start talking right, we start worshiping right. Amen. You don't worship God with a negative tongue. Something positive. Tell him how wonderful he is. If you need to tie the offering envelope, it should be there on your bench or in front of your bench. We thank you for your faithfulness and giving, particularly those that are giving online now. Probably the most difficult messages I ever preached in here, and I haven't even preached one in three months now or longer. It's about giving. And yet every sermon has something to do with giving, doesn't it? Amen. We, we give our lives for him. We love him. Yesterday, let me tell you what it's like to pastor a blessed church. That we had the finances to purchase all the awards and like some of the things we gave away a gun, but uh, but we've done things. Everything yesterday was free. Free. Amen. All the skeet, all the, all the shells, it's free. Amen. To, to uh, advertising, free. Everything free. Every, I forgot all the things we did. And we do it for Muscle Car Sunday, too. And when you're able to do this for people, they come in and, and they, they're disarmed. Amen. Because they know you're not fixing to put pressure on them to take an offering. We had a really, really good service yesterday morning with all those men. Amen. The preacher needed a little polishing, but it was good. Amen. It's a good day. And the bottom line, Frank, is there was no pressure. I don't want you to have pressure ever given in this house. I want you to feel free to give. Amen. Freely we receive. Freely we give. Amen. And we bless the Lord. And when you honor God with your tithe and your offering, and it's freely out of your heart, and there was no pressure on you to do it, amen, that's the right way of worship in your giving. Amen. So I'm asking you to do that, not just today, but every time we have an opportunity to give back to the Lord. Amen. David, I saw you filling out your offering while I was preaching. Amen. You was getting ready, sir. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to speak to you, David. 
Uh, God has more in store for you than just driving back and forth to Colorado Springs. Amen. He put you in a family down here, and I don't know what he has planned for you. But, sir, I, I, I'm not going to stand around and watch you just die. You hear me? I want you healthy. Amen. I want you well. You've been a blessing to me in this house. So I thank God for you. And I don't know if I like the beard yet. Was that encouraging? You okay with that? Okay, sir. There's certain things you can say to certain people and you get away with it. Amen. You wouldn't believe what Richard says to me. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Caitlin, thanks for coming today. Amen. Blessing to have you and your kids. I'm just going to make one announcement to just two. As a matter of fact, I just want to press on these a little bit. Fields of Faith will be Wednesday night, and uh, is it called Turner Stadium? Randall Reed Stadium in New Caney. Uh, we're just asking the youth and all of those together, and we normally have a large contingency of little country church people. If you do show up, amen, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock Wednesday night, wear a little country church shirt, represent, amen. And then don't forget, uh, Pastor John Ramsey will be with us the first week of April for our spring conference. Looking forward to having him here. Ms. Linda, I will be talking to you and somebody about feeding folk after church on that Sunday night. Amen. Tuesday night. Hallelujah. But looking forward to having Pastor John with us. Pastor David, come on up here. Y'all give him a hand as he comes. Amen.